Minimally invasive surgical techniques in patients with Crohn's disease. I have nothing to disclose. Crohn's disease is diagnosed in 1.3% of U.S. adults. While medical management is the preferred treatment, strictures and fistulae are common complications that may warrant surgical management. About one-third of these patients require surgical intervention within five years of diagnosis, and approximately half of these patients require surgery in 10 years. Operative management is rendered difficult by the thickened and inflamed mesentery and complicates the choice to use a minimally invasive approach to resection. There are several studies that suggest the advantages of minimally invasive surgery over open surgery, such as shorter length of stay, fewer wound complications, and enhanced visualization with magnification. Robotic assisted surgery adds the benefits such as better ergonomics with wristed instruments and a three-dimensional view of the operative field. We performed a NISQIP database query of patients with diagnosed Crohn's disease who underwent ileocecectomy between 2012 and 2017. The patients were divided into different groups based on the operative approach used, robotic assisted, laparoscopic, or open ileocecectomy. There were a total of 5,158 patients included in the study, and demographic information as well as perioperative and 30-day postoperative outcomes were collected. In addition to standard chi-square and Fisher exact tests that were used to compare the categorical variables in the study, both univariate and multivariate logistical regression models were used in this study. The multivariate analysis was used to determine the independent association of each variable with surgical approach. Confounding variables were identified and accounted for with the models and this analysis allowed for the comparison of the three surgical approaches among a clinically similar subset of patients. The demographic information is displayed here. There were 3,221 patients in the laparoscopic group, 1,816 patients in the open surgical group, and 121 patients in the robotic assisted group. The average age was higher in the open group and the overall nutrition status, which was estimated by serum prealbumin, was worse in the open group. There were similar rates of prior steroid use, history of diabetes, congestive heart failure, and COPD amongst the three groups. Notably, 6% of the patients in the open group required emergency surgery, while 0 to 2% of the patients in the minimally invasive groups met this criterion. When evaluating the 30-day postoperative outcomes, the patients who underwent open ileocecectomies had significantly higher rates of anastomotic leaks, prolonged ileus, wound infections, and return trips to the operating room. These patients were also more likely to have prolonged hospital stays. The patients who underwent the robotic-assisted ileocecectomy had significantly longer operative times. On multivariate analysis, the variables that were noted to be significantly different from the demographics were noted to be confounding variables. After controlling for these variables and creating clinically similar groups, the following conclusions were able to be drawn. Open ileocecectomy had significantly more wound infections compared to the laparoscopic cases. Patients who underwent open ileocecectomy were 1.5 times more likely to return to the operating room that admission compared to patients who underwent laparoscopic ileocecectomy. Robotic assisted ileocecectomy required significantly longer operating room time compared to laparoscopic surgery. Overall, there were similar rates of UTIs, cardiac events, and DBTs in the three groups. This study is the first to compare robotic-assisted laparoscopic and open ileocecectomy in patients with diagnosed Crohn's disease. It was a retrospective national database review with three groups that were not ideally matched. The limitations associated with a database study apply to this study. 
The patients in the open surgical group, for example, were more likely to have an emergent indication for surgery compared to those in the minimally invasive groups. This is reflective of the common practice to use an open approach in unstable patients. Additionally, there were several variables that were not reported in the database that would have strengthened the conclusions drawn in this study. For example, there was no measure of disease severity available in the data set, and we were likely comparing patients with varying degrees of disease severity against each other. As such, patients who underwent open surgeries may have had overall worse severity and more frequent emergent indications for surgery, which may play a role in the differences in postoperative outcomes that were observed. Other important variables missing from the database that would have been beneficial to include in the study include history of biologic medication use for the treatment of Crohn's and the need for a diverting ostomy at the time of the index operation. In conclusion, in carefully selected patients in a non-emergent setting, minimally invasive approaches to ileocecectomy in the setting of Crohn's disease are safe and efficacious. The minimally invasive approach may reduce the rates of anastomotic leaks and wound infections observed in patients undergoing open surgery. Future prospective studies with standardized patient characteristics are needed to support the observations made in this study. Thank you.